Hello, my name is Alex, and this is my capstone project for the data analysis course that I just completed with DevCodeCam, Trends in Live Poker Tournaments and Optimizing Your Poker Tournament Schedule. The technology that I utilized through this project is Python for all the coding, Jupyter Notebooks to keep myself organized, Selenium for web scraping, Pandas in order to clean and wrangle the data, SQL to gain some insights, and Tableau to visualize the data, insights, and create this story. According to Custom Market Insights, the poker market was $76 billion in 2021, and it is expected to reach $170 billion in 2030. This means that there is a lot of value to be captured in analyzing trends throughout the industry. Today, we'll focus primarily on how live tournament players can increase their annual return. This presentation will assume three, lever three levels of poker player, the beginner, the intermediate, and the professional. We're going to focus mostly on the intermediate player who's attempting to become a professional. And please bear with me for a few slides of text before we get to data in order to lay some groundwork on poker in general and why and how poker is a business. The beginner poker player is somebody who probably wants a pretty social environment. They want people around to help teach them the games, and they want pretty cheap games. They don't want to spend $500 in order to play a tournament and try to win big, just $10, $20, have some fun and enjoy themselves and learn. The intermediate player is someone who probably wants to play more online, and they want to play a lot of hands, study a lot more, and get really good at the game. They need a lot of experience in order to get the technical aspects of the game down to learn to make plus EV decisions. EV is a term you'll hear a lot in poker, and it stands for expected value. Pretty much every single decision that you make in poker has an expected value that is almost incalculatable. The most easy example of how expected value works is imagine flipping a coin. If the coin comes up heads, I give you $10. If the coin comes up tails, you give me $11. Even though in one flip, I can only either lose 10 or gain $11, the expected value is that I will gain $1 for every single flip, because the idea is that I will continue to do it for an infinite number of times, and that average will come out. Finally, the professional poker player has proven that they can capitalize on their opponent's mistakes, making them plus EV, which means they will make money if they continue to play poker for an iteratable amount of time. This means that they're looking to increase their profit at every single level of the game, from the decisions on the hands that they play, as well as picking which types of games to play in. So the very important question that we'll have throughout this project is how do we increase the return on investment of a professional poker player? There are a few key points in determining your profitability. The most important will be the difference in skill between you and your opponents. This is something, as mentioned, that the intermediate player is working on a lot and doesn't have too much to do with this presentation. Next is the ratio of the buy-in to the amount of money going into the prize pool. This will increase your profit. For example, if you spend $100 to play a poker tournament, and $90 of that 100 goes into the prize pool, meaning you can win that back, that means that there will be a prize pool ratio of 90%. $10 goes into the entry fee in order to pay the venue and staff. Next is the location and clustering of the tournaments. This can help minimize your losses because it costs a whole lot more to go play poker in New York just because it costs more to eat and live than it does over in Ohio. And a special quality of life mention is that the size of the prize pool is very important. If, for example, you know you can win a game and you can play it 365 days a year, but you can only win $50 a day on average playing that tournament, then there's a good chance that you will want a raise, because $50 a day is hardly enough to live on. Now let's get into the fun stuff. Where did all of my data come from? I scraped all of my data from a website called PokerAtlas.com using Selenium. I clicked through all the various locations on the website and collected US tournament data as far out as it would populate. This means that we're looking at data from about the middle of January to about the middle of March. Some of this data will be stale, however, the proof of concept is there and I'll be able to run this script as many times as I want and I will have time to improve it. 
After I ran my script, I ended up with about 7,500 unique rows of poker tournament data. Unfortunately, not all of them were perfect, so I got rid of some null values and some tournaments that weren't exactly tournaments and ended up with a grand total of 5,475 rows of data. Most of the columns in our data are pretty self-explanatory, but I wanted to make a few notes. First is that the date time is the start of the tournament, and generally uh, you can go play a tournament for about four hours of late registration after the tournament starts for those of us who need to shave before heading to a tournament. Next is that the postal code is the postal code of the venue of the tournament, whether that be a uh, casino, a card room, or some sort of event center. And this I created manually with a Google search and input it into a new CSV and joined the CSVs together, which means that I have the start of a complete uh, tournament or uh, venue, casino, area to postal code if you need it for future use. I'll give you a pretty good discount. Next is the prize pool ratio. This is a calculated column that I discussed a little bit earlier. Simply, however much of your total buy-in will go into the prize pool divided by whatever your total buy-in is creating a ratio. There will be one additional note on that in a bit. Last is the additional info. This was a catch-all for anything that I found in the website I was able to scrape that didn't have an exact column to put in. And this will be for your final decision making on whether you want to play this tournament. Finally, we're getting into some fun graphs and visualization. This is the average prize pool ratio for the total buy-in of the tournament. This is a very zoomed out lens because this is for every single tournament that I have, which means there's uh, 5,400 different tournaments and it goes all the way from zero dollar tournaments to 52,000 uh, dollar tournaments. So it is important to note here that uh, I'm about to zoom in so we can get some more information, but the reason I wanted to give you this is to know that once you start getting around the $3,200 range, even more towards the like $1,000 range, pretty much as far as you go out, you will always be profitable through this tournament because it has the highest uh, price pool ratio. So as long as you're better than your opponents, you're going to be doing pretty well picking those decisions. Zooming in a little bit more, this one goes all the way out to $3,500, and I believe the highest tournament here is uh, $3,250. So, fun, interesting things that we have here is the total buy-in, the number of tournaments, and then how the price pool ratio has been averaged. And the reason I wanted to give you this is to show that between the $1,000 and the $3,200 range, while any tournament you do will be about a price pool ratio of, you know, at the lowest 0.8. Um, you know, I think over here we have a, a 0 0.87, 0 0.9, 0 0.89. So those ratios, even though they're the worst in this range, they're still pretty good ratios. You're going to be doing fine. However, you might note that over here we have a $2,700 tournament and then also a $2,650 tournament. This is important to note because the price pool ratio is way better on the 2650, which means more of your buy-in will come back to you if you play that tournament than the other tournament. Let's zoom in a little bit more because this is where we can really find the value. And the most difficult part about trying to be a professional poker player is moving from playing this range of tournaments, the say $50 to $500 range, to playing that $1,000 plus range. It's mostly difficult because, as you can see here, there is a lot of variance in the prize pool ratios. So you could, and I'm certain that I did when I started playing tournaments, play this tournament here at $270 with a prize pool ratio of only 74%, which means probably nobody is making money. Anyone who actually does win money at that tournament, uh, ultimately if you played it in the long run, all of your profit does go to the entry fee to play the venue as well as the staffing. However, there are a bunch of tournaments that you can decide to play, so you want to start picking some of these uh, peaks rather than playing down in the valleys. We'll come back to this in a little bit, 
But first, I wanted to show you just a little bit more insight as far as where tournaments are being held at the moment. The good news, this is every single one of the tournaments that I have, the good news is that there's a little bit everywhere in the country except for right over here in the, the smack dab in the middle of the United States. But anywhere along the coast or even uh, in the south you'll have quite a few options, although you will start to notice, and I'll bring your attention as I filter this down to Las Vegas, California, the East Coast, and Florida. So let's filter this down a little bit more and look only at the zero to $100 range of tournaments. I wanted to put up here some insights I found with SQL. This is a total of 2,953 tournaments, which means most of the tournaments, a, a majority, are in this range, the very, very cheap ones. And the average price pool ratio is 74%, which, as noted earlier, is terrible. Now, something I forgot to mention is that any free roll tournament, which is a tournament that costs zero dollars but you can win money back, I put in as a price pool ratio of 1.1. Technically, we'd be dividing by zero if we tried to find that price pool ratio, but I wanted to note that technically you are going to always be profitable in those tournaments because you will be making money without having to put any in, so your technical EV is infinite. However, it's not quite how it will work out. I promise I have investigated it. You will not make enough money to uh, cancel out your living expenses. As I skip through the next few slides, notice that the average price pool ratio is going to go up pretty linearly as we go up with the, uh, prize pool, the total buy-in for these tournaments. So, Moving next, you can notice uh, there's a, quite a bit of a change here uh, where just the clustering of how the tournaments move changes to the $100 to $200 level. Over here in the 0 to 100, there's no tournaments in New York, but 100 to 200, there's 36, lots of them. Uh, another note for the next couple of sl map slides of all of our maps is that these bubbles are not for uh, map to map, they only are a proper ratio for their own map. Moving up to the 500 to a, uh, sorry, the 201 to 500 dollar range, there's fewer tournaments as we go up. Price pool ratio does go up, and we start to see more of this clustering in California, Vegas, down south, Florida, and uh, quite a few up here in the northeast as well. And then up to those big, big professionals, to $500 to $1,000 tournaments, we start not only clustering into places, but also to very specific venues, where each one of these postal codes, we've just scooped it up into one postal code for the entire state. And last but not least, the uh, big professionals spending $1,000 to $52,000 on their tournaments. It's uh, quite a few, um, uh, quite a big diminishing of of who's playing where, how many uh, locations we have. So this map is probably the reason that I decided to do this project in the first place. This shows all of the tournaments between fifty and a thousand dollars that have a price pool ratio of greater than eighty percent. This filtering will allow us to find exactly the tournaments that we want to play in order to create the tournament schedule that will work best for each individual. And I'm going to put that right here into a dashboard that will really help in order to find any tournament that you want to play and can be profitable in. First, just pick any date, any day, and or multiple span of days. And then pick your location on the optimized $50 to $1,000 map with the price pool ratio. Let's take a look at Las Vegas because it makes a whole lot of sense to look at Vegas here. We'll look at Vegas for February 6th. I think today is the 5th, so anything uh, that is happening tomorrow. And what you will notice is that we end up with a filtered list of all of the tournaments that we know are profitable tournaments because I've already filtered them out in our map. You can do this for any number of days, any number of locations in order to fit your own perfect needs. In conclusion, if you are a beginner who just wants to play and have fun, there is likely a tournament near you. The more money you spend on a poker tournament, the lower percentage you lose to paying the entry fee. 
If you're playing in the 500 to five, sorry, the 50 to 500 dollar range, then there are a lot of tournaments to avoid due to their low prize pool ratio. And making the most optimal decision in poker, making the most optimal decision on which poker tournament to play can mean the difference of thousands of dollars annually. Thank you for joining me and listening all the way through version one of my uh, poker tournament analytics and scheduler. I just want to leave you with a few improvements that I would like to do uh, for version two. One would be limiting the web scraping to 30 days. That seems to be all that is accurate on the website, and I've met poker players. Nobody is trying to decide their schedule past 30 days, I promise. Most of them can't do it for more than three days. I'd also like to expand the web scraping internationally, making it up into Canada as well as over into Europe to get a lot more data in order to visualize and, and see what's going on in the industry as a whole. And then make more customizable filters for an end user of this dashboard so that we can really narrow down individually to what you exactly want. Then I'd like to connect a calendar to add and remove tournaments from your own per personal schedule, whether that's your uh, Microsoft or Apple, whichever schedule that you prefer. And at, also I'd like to add a cost of living index and part-time lodging component. Uh, if I could do that, then I can end up finding places where reducing your expenses is potentially even better than maximizing your profits, making us profitable as a whole uh, business, not just profitable as a good poker player. Thank you.